consider, if you will, the nature of softness. What is it truly? Is it the gentle smile you offer to strangers, the acquiescence to others' demands, the constant bending of your will to accommodate those around you? Or is it something far more insidious, a havoc born of fear and misunderstanding that keeps you from claiming your rightful place in the universe? I tell you now with absolute certainty that the softness you have been taught to revere is nothing more than a construct of the world of Caesar, a veil pulled over your eyes to keep you from recognizing your own divinity. When you are soft to everyone, you are not expressing love. You are denying the very essence of who you are. Let us pause for a moment and truly contemplate this idea. Close your eyes if you will and imagine yourself as you are now, accommodating, pleasing, always putting others first. Feel the weight of that existence settle upon you. Now ask yourself, is this truly who I am? Is this the full expression of the divine within me? As you sit there, eyes closed, fully immersed in this realization, you are tapping into a profound truth. You are at this very moment beginning to break free from the shackles of false kindness. For what is true kindness, if not the honest expression of your divine self? Now, open your eyes and look around you. The world may appear unchanged, but I assure you, a profound shift has occurred within you. You have, for a brief moment, glimpsed the power that comes when we shed the illusion of necessary softness. But let us not be content with mere glimpses of this liberated state. The art of stopping being soft to everyone requires consistent practice, unwavering focus, and a willingness to stand firm in the face of others' expectations and demands. It requires that you maintain a clear vision of your true self, not just in quiet contemplation, but in every interaction, every decision, every moment of your day. Imagine, if you will, a man who truly understands his own worth, who recognizes the divine within himself. This man does not acquiesce to every demand placed upon him. He does not contort himself to fit others' expectations. He stands firm in his truth, speaks with conviction, and acts with purpose. How does this man carry himself? How does he interact with others? How does he approach his goals and dreams? This man, my friends, moves through the world with a sense of authority that is palpable. He doesn't wait for permission to pursue his passions. He understands that his desires are divine inspiration, meant to be fulfilled. He doesn't hold back his truth or compromise his integrity, for he knows that in doing so, he would be denying not just himself, but the very God that expresses through him. This man is not unkind or unloving. On the contrary, he is more genuinely loving than ever before. By embracing his true nature, by refusing to be falsely soft, he has tapped into the infinite love of the divine. He has compressed eternity into each moment, and in doing so, he has discovered the secret to truly honoring himself and others. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Neville, if I stop being soft to everyone, won't I become harsh or uncaring? Won't I damage my relationships or lose the love of others? These are natural concerns born from a misunderstanding of what it truly means to stop being soft. You see, stopping being soft to everyone is not about becoming hard or yielding. It's not about disregarding others' feelings or trampling over their needs. It's about bringing a new level of authenticity, of divine truth to each interaction. It's about recognizing that the highest form of love is not acquiescence, but the honest expression of your divine nature. When you truly embody this state of divine authority, you find that you naturally command respect without demanding it. You begin to attract people and circumstances that align with your true self. You cease engaging in relationships that require you to diminish yourself, and you begin to forge connections based on mutual respect and shared divinity. Consider the words of scripture, you are the light of the world. This is not a metaphor or a pretty saying. It is a profound truth about your nature. When you are soft to everyone, when you dim your light to make others comfortable, you are not just doing a disservice to yourself. You are denying the world the full radiance of God expressing through you. But how, you may ask, does one begin this practice? How does one stop being soft in a world that seems to demand compliance and accommodation? The answer, my dear friends, lies in the power of your wonderful human imagination. Your imagination is the very voice of God within you, the tool by which you can reshape your concept of self and consequently your entire world. Begin by selecting a scene, a short, simple scene that embodies the life you would live if you truly stopped being soft to everyone. Perhaps it's a scene of you confidently expressing your opinion in a meeting, even when it goes against the popular view. 
Maybe it's the feeling of saying no to a request that doesn't align with your values or goals. Or it could be the sense of peace you feel as you pursue your dreams without seeking anyone's approval. Now enter that scene in your imagination. Do not merely visualize it as if watching a movie. Step into it. Be the protagonist in this drama of your creation. Feel the strength, the clarity, the unshakable certainty that comes with honoring your divine self. Make it as real and as vivid as you possibly can. And most importantly, feel the emotion, the power, the freedom, the self-respect that this new way of being brings you. Repeat this imaginal act night after night, day after day. Let it be the last thing you experience before drifting off to sleep. And the first thing you return to upon waking. Live in this state as often as you can, for in doing so, you are rewriting the script of your life. You are stopping being soft not through force or will, but through a fundamental shift in your concept of self. As you persist in this practice, you will begin to notice profound shifts in your outer world. You may find yourself naturally speaking your truth without fear. You may notice a new quality in your relationships as people begin to respect your boundaries and value your authentic self. You may discover wells of creativity and productivity that you never knew you possessed simply because you've stopped stifling your divine inspiration. These changes, my friends, are not coincidences. They are the natural result of your shift in consciousness. They are the physical manifestation of your new understanding of self and your place in the universe. Do not question them. Do not doubt them. Simply accept them with gratitude, knowing that they are confirmation of the truth you have accepted in your imagination. But what of those moments when the old habits of softness and compliance creep back in? What are those times when the world of Caesar seems to demand that you shrink yourself, that you bend to others' will? This, beloved, is where your resolve is tested and strengthened. Remember, the outer world is a shadow, a reflection of past states of consciousness. It takes time for this shadow to fully align with your new state of being. During this period of transition, you must stand firm in your conviction. You must persist in your assumption that you are a divine being worthy of respect and honor. When you feel yourself slipping back into old patterns of softness, do not fight it. Do not resist it. Simply observe it, acknowledge it, and then gently return to the feeling of divine authority. Remind yourself that your imagination is the reality and that the world of Caesar must conform to it in due time. For it is written, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you continue to practice stopping being soft to everyone, you will find that your entire being begins to shift. Your thoughts naturally align with your divine nature. Your words carry the weight of truth and authority. Your actions spring from a place of self-respect and divine purpose. You no longer seek permission or approval. You move through the world with the confidence of one who knows their true identity. This, my dear friends, is the art and science of living from your divine self. It is the method by which you can transcend the limitations of false softness and step into the fullness of your divine nature. It is not a rejection of love or kindness, but a profound affirmation of the highest form of love, the love that honors the divine in yourself and in others. As we delve deeper into this practice, let us consider the nature of reality itself. In the world of Caesar, reality appears to demand compliance and softness, a solid construct that we must navigate with caution and accommodation. But in the realm of imagination, in the kingdom of God within you, reality is fluid. You are the operant power, the divine being capable of reshaping your world through the power of your assumptions. When you stop being soft to everyone, you are essentially stepping out of the illusion of powerlessness and into the truth of your divine authority. You are selecting from the infinite possibilities that exist, the reality that aligns with your highest self. And as you dwell in that reality in your imagination, embodying the strength and authenticity of your true nature, you draw it into your physical experience. Consider the words of scripture, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. This is not a promise of some future liberation. It is a profound statement about the nature of consciousness. In the instant that you shift your awareness, in the moment that you decide to stop being soft and start honoring your divine self, you are free. And as you change the world around, you must change to reflect your new state of being. But my beloved listeners, I must caution you. This power is not to be used for domination or the harm of others. For in harming others, you only harm yourself. Remember, in the timeless reality of your true self, there is no other, we are all one. All expressions of the same divine consciousness. Therefore, use this power wisely to uplift yourself and, by extension, all of humanity. As you practice stopping being soft to everyone, you may find that your relationships begin to shift. Those who are accustomed to your compliance may initially resist your new way of being. 
This is natural and to be expected. But do not be moved by appearances. Hold steady in your new concept of self and watch as your relationships transform. Some relationships may fall away, and this too is natural. Not everyone is ready to interact with you in your divine authority. But fear not, for as these relationships fade, new ones will emerge, relationships based on mutual respect, shared purpose, and recognition of the divine in each other. Embrace these shifts. Allow your imagination to soar beyond the confines of your current relationships. For in truth, the ultimate aim of this practice is not merely to change how others treat you, but to fully realize your oneness with the divine. It is to know beyond all doubt that you are an eternal being expressing itself in human form, that you are limitless, that you are in essence, God expressing itself as you. Now let us address a question that may have arisen in your minds. If I am to stop being soft to everyone, does this mean I should never compromise or show flexibility? Should I become rigid and unyielding in all my interactions? The answer, my friends, is both yes and no. You see, stopping being soft to everyone in the conventional sense is not the same as becoming inflexible. To re-embody this state requires a shift in consciousness so profound that your very concept of compromise and flexibility is transformed. You do not become rigid, you become authentically you in all your divine complexity. Imagine, if you will, a mighty oak tree. It stands tall and strong, its roots deep in the earth, its branches reaching towards the sky. When the wind blows, does the oak resist with all its might? No, it sways and bends, but it does not break. It is flexible, yet it never compromises its essential nature as an oak. This is how you must approach your life when you stop being soft to everyone. You stand firm in your truth, your values, your divine nature. Yet you remain flexible in your interactions with the world, bending without breaking, adapting without compromising your essence. As you practice this, you will find that your interactions with others take on a new quality. What once felt like a constant struggle to please everyone now becomes a dance of authenticity. For you understand that in honoring your true self, you are also honoring the divine in others. But remember, my dear friends, this is not about becoming harsh or uncaring. It is about bringing more truth, more authenticity, more divinity into each interaction. It is about understanding that the fullness of your being is available to you here and now, if only you have the courage to claim it. Now let us delve deeper into the practical aspects of this practice. How does one maintain this state of divine authority throughout the day amidst the demands and expectations of daily life? The key lies in cultivating a new habit of thought, a new way of perceiving and interacting with the world around you. Begin each day by immersing yourself in the feeling of your divine authority. Before you open your eyes in the morning, spend a few moments in the state of being your true, uncompromised self. Feel the strength, the clarity, the unshakable certainty that comes from knowing who you truly are. Let this feeling permeate your entire being so that you carry it with you as you rise and begin your day. As you go about your daily activities, continuously remind yourself of your divine nature. When faced with a decision, ask yourself, what would my highest self choose? This simple question can shift your perspective dramatically, allowing you to approach situations from a place of divine authority rather than habitual softness. Practice self-respect in each moment, not from a place of ego, but from a place of divine recognition. Be grateful not for what others think of you, but for who you truly are. This attitude of self-respect aligns you with the frequency of your divine nature, drawing more reasons to honor yourself into your life. Watch your words carefully, for they are powerful creators. Speak as if each word were a declaration of your divine nature. Eliminate phrases of self-deprecation or unnecessary apology from your vocabulary. Instead of saying, I'm sorry to bother you, say, thank you for your time, instead of saying, I'm not sure if this is right, but say, here's what I think your words shape your reality. Choose them as if they were divine decrees. In your interactions with others, bring a new level of authenticity and self-respect. Listen not out of obligation, but out of genuine interest. Speak your truth not with aggression, but with calm certainty. Set boundaries not out of fear, but out of self-love and respect for the divine in both yourself and others. When you find yourself slipping back into old patterns of excessive softness or people-pleasing, do not berate yourself. Simply observe it, acknowledge it, and gently guide your consciousness back to the state of divine authority. Remember, this is a practice. Like any skill, it takes time and patience to master. Be kind to yourself as you learn and grow. As you persist in this practice, you will begin to notice a profound shift in your perception of the world. What once seemed like demands become opportunities for self-expression. What once caused you anxiety is now met with calm certainty. 
you will find yourself naturally making choices that align with your highest good, effortlessly moving towards the realization of your deepest desires. But here, my beloved listeners, is where many stumble. As they begin to see the fruits of their new state of consciousness manifesting in the physical world, they become excited and impatient. They start to wonder how much time it will take for everyone to recognize and respect their new way of being. They look for signs and try to figure out the how and when of their complete transformation. In doing so, they slip out of their divine authority and back into the mindset of seeking external validation. This is a crucial point in your journey. When you begin to see your life transforming, when you notice the world rearranging itself to accommodate your new reality, you must hold steady in your assumption. Do not be moved by appearances. Do not try to figure out how or when your complete transformation will manifest. Simply continue to live from the state of divine authority, knowing with unshakable faith that what you have imagined must come to pass. Remember the words of scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen your thing. Your absolute knowing that you are a divine being worthy of respect and honor is the very substance that brings your new reality into physical manifestation. It is the evidence of the unseen truth of your divine nature. As you continue to stop being soft to everyone, you may find that your relationship with the concept of strength itself begins to change. You may discover that true strength is not about domination or control, but about unwavering self-respect and authenticity. For in truth, the state of divine authority is not about imposing your will on others. It is a state of consciousness, a way of being in the world that naturally commands respect. When you truly embody this state, you realize that there is nothing to prove, nothing to defend. Everything you could ever need, respect, love, success, flows naturally from your alignment with your divine self. This realization brings a profound sense of peace and fulfillment. You no longer seek validation from others, for you know that you are already whole, already complete, already divine. This, my dear friends, is the ultimate freedom. It is the state of being that all spiritual teachings point towards. It is the kingdom of heaven that is within you. When you stop being soft to everyone, you are claiming your rightful place in this kingdom. You are acknowledging your oneness with the divine, your role as a co-creator of reality. But let us be clear, this state of consciousness does not mean that you become inconsiderate or unloving. On the contrary, when you stop being soft to everyone, you become more genuinely loving, more intentional in your choices. You become acutely aware of the impact of your thoughts words and actions. You understand that each moment is an opportunity to express your highest self, to contribute to the world in a meaningful way. As we near the end of our time together, I want to address a question that may have arisen in your minds. If I am to stop being soft to everyone, does this mean I should never show vulnerability or admit to mistakes? The answer, my beloved, is that vulnerability and accountability take on a new meaning when you live from this state of consciousness. You see, when you stop being soft to everyone, your vulnerability becomes a strength, not a weakness, for you understand the power of authenticity. You don't hide your struggles or pretend to be perfect, but you also don't use your vulnerability as an excuse or a plea for pity. You own your experiences, your growth, your humanity, all while standing firm in your divine nature. In this state, you may find that you accomplish more than you ever thought possible, yet with less struggle and strain, for you are no longer pushing against the world or trying to please everyone. You are simply being your authentic divine self, allowing your life to unfold naturally in alignment with your true nature. And so, my dear friends, as we conclude this exploration of stopping being soft to everyone, I urge you to take this practice into your daily life. Begin now, in this very moment, to live from the state of divine authority. Feel the strength, the clarity, the self-respect that comes from knowing who you truly are. Remember, this is not about becoming harsh or uncaring. It is about embracing the fullness of your being. It is about aligning yourself with the deepest truth of your divine nature. It is about claiming your divine inheritance as an eternal being expressing itself in human form. As you leave this place and return to your daily lives, carry with you the knowledge that you are a divine being worthy of respect and honor. Let it inform your thoughts, your words, your actions. Let it transform your perception of yourself and your place in the world. For in truth, you are not separate from the divine, you are the divine experiencing itself through your unique perspective. Stop being soft to everyone. And watch as your life takes on a new depth and richness. Live from your divine authority and see how your path unfolds before you with grace and ease. Be the person who stands firm in their truth and discover that you have always been that person waiting to be acknowledged and expressed. 
Go forth, my beloved, and create the life you desire. For you are the operant power. You are the divine made flesh. You are the creator of your reality. Everything you could ever want or need is available to you now. Claim it. Live it. And always remember, the world is yourself pushed out. As you transform your inner world, as you stop being soft to yourself, your outer world must follow. This is the law. This is the promise. This is the truth that sets you free. In closing, I leave you with this thought. Each interaction is an opportunity to express your divine nature. Each challenge is an invitation to stand firm in your truth. In this journey of stopping being soft to everyone lies the secret to true empowerment. For when you fully embrace your divine authority, you tap into the infinite power of your true self. Live from your divine authority and you will discover that true strength lies not in domination, but in authenticity. For in the divine reality, strength and love are one and the same. They are the very essence of your being, waiting to be expressed in each moment. Thank you, my dear friends, for your attention and your willingness to explore these profound truths. May you go forth in the knowing that you are divine, that you are powerful beyond measure, and that you are worthy of the utmost respect and honor. For you are, in truth, God expressing itself as you. Honor that divinity in yourself, and watch as the world rises to meet you. God bless you all.